Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the next edition of the Bobcad Cam webinar series. Today's topic is what's new in V30, the toolpath editor. Let's see. Uh, in today's webinar, you'll learn about the basic features the toolpath editor offers and its workflow. As you know, my name is Al DePaulo. I'm the voice of the Bobcat After Dark video series. You can find me at, on Instagram at Al DePaulo or hashtag Bobcat After Dark. You can find me in our Facebook groups, uh, Bobcat After Dark, or on YouTube, or uh, just generally hanging around uh, the internet with anything that has to do with CAD and CAM. All right, what are we going to learn today? Uh, we're talking about the Toolpath Editor. Uh, we'll go through selection methods, convert to CAD, how to move, modify, and delete. There's actually eight different uh, commands the Toolpath Editor uh, offers, and we're going to go through a few of them, not quite all of them. Now, when we talk about selection methods, we're going to talk about window selection, uh, single pick, uh, chain selecting, uh, you have a polygon pick, and also point pick. Okay, so these are some of the selection methods that we'll review. We're also going to talk about convert to CAD, uh, similar to the, the backplot function we've had in, uh, in our older versions, like uh, our uh, classic versions of Bobcad, you know, converting lines or arcs, uh, the 100 entity max, and then also where that geometry gets put, which is on your active layer. Uh, we're going to talk about moving toolpath. Uh, you can pick or enter, drag, and then some of the linking options that are available when you're moving your toolpath around. And then let's see what else we have. We have modify toolpath. So you can change like the cutting feed or the plunge feed or, or a rapid or even user define enter a value for a feed rate. Okay. And the last thing that we're going to review is deleting toolpath. After your toolpath is created, you do have the ability to delete toolpath. Uh, what you're linking, whether you do a direct link or if it retracts, and then uh, the extension options. Now, as always with Bobcad, you can expect fewer steps, better cuts, and more profit. Okay, give me just a second to get my screen set up here, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, while we're doing that, I uh, wanted to get a quick shout out. If you could just type what your... Um, where you're from, you know, if you're from New Jersey, like Irwin is, or if you're from uh, Colorado, wherever you might be, just go ahead and give a, a shout out so I know where everybody's from. Very good. We got Larry from Tennessee, Ken from Portland, Larry from Illinois. We got Erie, Pennsylvania with Robert, Josh from Massachusetts. I want to thank each and every one of you for showing up here today. Uh, I really appreciate and enjoy you guys participating in our webinars. We got uh, Jeff from South Carolina, Lewis from Houston, uh, Norbert from Minnesota, Joe from Connecticut, Reginald from San Diego. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Now, you know, before we get started here, let's just uh, a couple of things that I wanted to know about uh, what version of the Bobcad software you guys are running. Um, oh yeah, you're welcome, John. No problem. Uh, what version, whatever version that you're running, if you're running an older version or a newer version, um, if you are not running Bobcat, just say I'm not running Bobcat. So that's fine. The other thing that I want to touch on real quick, uh, the toolpath editor is a new feature to the Bobcat software. Um, if you've ever used a toolpath editor in the past, just go, set, go ahead and write, I've used a toolpath editor in the past. If you haven't, no big deal. But if you have, say, yes, I've used a toolpath editor. Mike says, what is Bobcat? <laughs> That's funny, Bobcat. All right. Now, and then the last thing is, um, if you have some expectation of what you think the toolpath editor is or does, uh, just go ahead and write what that is, what you think it is. Now, obviously, we're going to go through a couple examples here today, but if you have a certain expectation of what the toolpath editor should do, uh, just go ahead and write that in, what you think the toolpath editor should do. Now, the question you should ask yourself is, have you ever wanted to directly edit toolpath to change, you know, maybe its feed rate, uh, change its location, uh, or even remove portions of your toolpath okay if the question is yes to any of those that is what the toolpath editor is for and this webinar is for you okay the purpose 
of the, or let's just start with what is the Toolpath Editor? Well, the Toolpath Editor is uh, an interactive way for you to modify and edit your Toolpath. Its purpose is to edit Toolpath to give you complete freedom to modify the calculated Toolpath to add, remove, or modify the existing Toolpath. That's really the, the purpose for it. Uh, that's what it's all about. So that's what we're going to get into today. Now, again, we're going to cover uh, selection methods, convert to CAD, move toolpath, modify toolpath, and delete. Uh, the first thing that I want to get into here is where is the toolpath editor located? Okay, so I have a I have a sample part here. This was one of the parts that I used in last week's uh, webinar to talk about some of the features here. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know is you'll find the toolpath editor if you go over any operation and you right click. You get it, all your different options here, and you'll notice Edit Toolpath is where you're going to see the Toolpath Editor. So we click this, and the Toolpath Editor will pop up, and we're going to go through all the different options in here. Okay? So you'll see over any single operation, you got to do one at a time. If you right-click and go to Edit, this is the Toolpath Editor. It comes up, and then you can start working with the Toolpath Editor. Okay? All right. So again, if you go over a feature, Okay, this one has a couple of different drilling routines. If we want to modify one, we right click, we go to edit toolpath, and then the toolpath editor will come up. All right? All right. Now, when we look inside of the toolpath editor, there's a couple of things. All right, the first section that we're going to see here is the command section. These are the different features or options that are in the toolpath editor. There's eight here, so you have delete, Trim and relink, move, replace, break, modify attributes, and extend cut move. These are the eight different options or commands that you have in the toolpath editor. Okay. The next thing that we want to look at here is selected toolpath. Okay, so as you start selecting toolpath, it's going to populate in this window here. And we're going to review all the sections, but just so we get something available, I'm going to do a window pick here. And here you can see these are all the different um, entities or elements of the toolpath that I've selected. Okay, so we see a list of them here. All right, so that's your selection option. You do have this uh, standard picking mode. You do have a polygon picking mode. You do have a, a point pick mode as well. Okay, so standard polygon picking, uh, point picking. Uh, this is your convert to CAD icon right here. If you have whatever is selected, you can convert that to CAD. All right, so the next section that we have here is the parameter section, okay? So the parameters, these are going to be different options that each uh, command may offer, and we'll go in and we'll edit what these options are depending on what it is that we're trying to do. Uh, so you can see in this example, I have delete selected. This is the toolpath that I have selected under my parameters. I can change my link options here. I can change my retract options here. I have an extension option, okay? So those are your parameters, and that's where you're going to go in and, and make some changes or set some values. Uh, the next thing below that, we see execute. So when you click execute, whatever the command is will will launch okay uh, you do have an undo so if you make a mistake you can go back you do have a redo so if you decide that you wanted to keep it you can redo it all right and then the last section that we have down here is an animation so as you make ch uh, changes you can turn your animation on and you can back plot through each of the different steps so you can see what those changes are and how they're affecting your toolpath all right so hopefully that makes sense now the tip for this or something that you need to put attention on is you can only edit one operation at a time. Okay, so, you know, we have multiple operations in here. They are all visible on the screen right now, but because we edited our drill feature, or I'm sorry, our drill operation, that would be the only operation that we would be able to select at that time. Okay. All right, very good. So let's go ahead and cancel out of this for a second. There is a question that came up uh, about when I machine parts with larger than the travels, I have to move the part. It'd be nice if I could edit the toolpath to move uh, X the last uh, quarter inch and pull up uh, in Z so that I can move the part. Uh, move the part, Mike. 
cuts blend better. Okay, so we'll talk about moving. Um, we'll talk about moving toolpath. Uh, so that that will be one of the things that we'll get into. Let's see. All right, so that's about that's about all we got to cover there. So. All right, so we're talking about commands, selected toolpath, parameters, execute, and simulate. Uh, those are generally the steps that we have. Now, the first thing that I want to get into is selection methods. Okay, so depending on what you're working on, uh, you're going to need to select different uh, portions of your toolpath. So let's go ahead and go through some of those examples. Uh, selection method, in order to edit your toolpath, you'll have to select what you want to edit first. Now, a tip that I have here is before you start editing your toolpath, it may be a good idea for you to go ahead and blank all your toolpaths out. Uh, this will make it really easy for you to isolate uh, just one toolpath. So you're only looking at one toolpath at, at a time. So that's what I would recommend for you. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go to our operation and we're going to choose edit toolpath. All right. And we'll bring our toolpath editor up. All right, so what we want to talk about right now is the selection methods, and there are a couple of different selection methods that you have. Okay, this one here you can see is standard picking. Now, when you're in standard picking, you can draw a box around the screen, and it will select everything that's in the window. Okay, so you do have window select for standard picking. Okay, now the other thing, if you want to delete items that are in the tree here, or I'm sorry, in this selected window, you can click on any item, you can right click and choose delete and that will delete a single item or you can click in this window and just choose delete all and that will remove all of them. You can window pick to select it, you can window pick to deselect it, okay? So very similar to our standard selection methods, okay? So you have window pick to select, window pick to deselect. Now you also have single, so you can pick on one at a time. And you'll notice as I move my mouse over this entity here, this window will come up. So what this is about, this is a multi-select window, multi-option. Basically your mouse is very close to multiple entities. So this will help you pick which one you wanna work with. Uh, the other thing you could do too is you could zoom in and uh, that will make it easier for you to pick which one you're working with as well. All right, so you can single pick, you could pick multiple entities, so you can see I'm selecting more than one at a time. All right, you can also window pick to deselect them. So you have your standard picking modes here of window pick, single pick, and then it's an add remove selection just like the software normally is, okay? So that's a single pick. The next thing that we wanna look at is chain selecting. So you can chain select just like you normally would. This would be a shift left click. So if I hold down shift and I left click on the entity, you will see that it will select through to a chain um, that is connected. Now, I have to say I'm new to the toolpath editor myself um, you know when you have linking and, and and a lot of joining that's going on here uh, you do need to be um, uh, careful with your chain selection I, I haven't had a lot of practice with it but I have noticed that um, well first off I didn't even know that you could do a chain selection uh, until I read through the help files, which was great, but you can uh, select a chain and be able to pick through like that, okay? So you have window, single pick, chain selection, okay? The next thing we're gonna talk about here is the polygon picking, okay? So we'll delete all of this geometry. If we go to a polygon picking, what's gonna happen here is uh, control one, or control one to get to a top view. Uh, as you click your mouse, what it does is it will draw out like a box, and then anything that is in the box, uh, you right click and, and that will be part of the selection. Okay, so let's delete all again. We're gonna do a polygon pick. So polygon pick is chosen. We're gonna left click, left click, left click, left click. We have everything that's in that box is what we wanna work with. We can right click, okay. And now we've selected those entities. All right, now you will notice that it selected this entity here as well. That was in the box and it got all of that entity. Okay, so we have polygon picking. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, delete our selection here. All right, again, we talked about the multi-selection uh, option where like on this line here, uh, you may have multiple entities that are within that area. Oh, hold on, cancel, single pick. 
You may have multiple entities that are in that area. You can see these are all the different options here. So when you click close to it or lines that are in the same location, this dialog box will come up and this way you can sort through to pick which one you want. All right, so that's the multi-option selection there. Uh, and as we talked about before, if I select something and I wanna remove it, I can click on it again to remove it. If I draw out a box, I can draw out a box again to remove it. If I have items that are in the selected toolpath window, I can pick on individual ones, right click and delete, or I can right click and choose delete all. All right, is there any questions about the selection mode there? Well, if there is, go ahead and ask it now. Otherwise, we're gonna move on to the next section. Now again, the tip for this is before you start editing your toolpath, go ahead and blank everything out. All right, so this way it's not visible. And then uh, only the operation that you're working on is visible. So that will help. Uh, you can do things like go to a front view. Let me click on the screen here. So I could go to a, a, a front view like this and be able to select multiple entities. You know, and depending on what you're trying to do, uh, any of these, uh, either single pick, window pick, chain picking, polygon picking, uh, will all come into play. Now, there was one other item on here, which is this point pick. Um, when you have point pick, you'll notice, see how a point was selected there? Uh, when you have point pick chosen, you are able to pick up a point uh, as part of the selection. All right, so that's an option. You can turn it on and you're able to pick up a point. You can turn it off, all right? All right, let's go ahead and uh, delete all of these. And I think that's it on selection methods. Uh, let's see, what is point pick? Okay, point pick again gives you the ability to pick a, um, a point location as part of your selection. Um, why would I pick points? Uh, Dirk, I'm not positive of that. To be honest, hey look, I'm a very transparent parent person. I'm a little behind on this webinar uh, because of the storm, so I didn't have as much time I normally do to prepare for these. Uh, there obviously is a reason behind it, but I'm not sure the answer right now, so I'll, ju I'll just let you know. Hey, thanks for letting me off on that, you know? All right, let's see. There was another question, Erwin, uh, is that delete or unselect? That's another good question, too. I think um, some of the... Um, the wording that's in here for selected toolpath, this is really a uh, delete from the selection. Okay, so we're not deleting any of the toolpath. Um, this is just gonna delete it from the selection or deselect it. Um, there might be extra points in the toolpath. There could be extra points in the toolpath. Um, I'm not I'm not positive exactly what we're going to use that for, but uh, I'm sure we will find out. Uh, like a rapid and a feed move close together each other. Well, that's a really good point. If you have a rapid and a feed that are close to, together with each other, uh, which is also why when you go to selection and you go to pick on one of these items, we get the multi uh, options. So this way you can pick through to see is it the feed move that you were trying to adjust or was it the rapid move to get out? Okay, so that's kind of what that was there for uh, Jerry but that's a good point all right so let's move on to the next topic uh, convert to CAD okay this feature allows you to convert your toolpath into lines or arcs all right so let's um let's take a look at that I wouldn't it, it's not a command you'll notice these are your commands here up at the top so convert to toolpath is not a command it, it's more so just an option it's this uh, icon right here, okay? Convert selected toolpath into CAD geometry, all right? So how does this work? Well, what I can do is I can select on any entity, an entity being a line or an arc, right? And then I can just click convert to CAD, and then it says total entities created on active layer one, uh, one arc. So what, what I've done right now is I've just converted uh, that, um, that toolpath entity into geometry. That's how that works. So let me go ahead and cancel out of this and then we'll turn this uh, this off. And, and again, this is one of the tips that I have for you guys um, or something to be aware of is that whatever the active layer is, when you hit convert to CAD, that's the layer that it's gonna go on, all right? So let me go ahead and uh, undo that here. I'm just gonna create a new layer and make it active. We'll go to our operation right click and choose edit okay and then from there we're going to select our tool path so we're going to just click on this line right here okay or actually this arc right here we're going to do convert to cad all right it, it gives us a little pop-up we say okay 
we're going to cancel out of this and then you'll see uh let me get away from the toolpath here you can see now we have that that entity that arc okay so convert to cad gives you the ability to take your toolpath and convert it back to geometry it's actually a really good feature all right so let's uh let's dig into this a little bit more so let's go ahead and edit this feature all right so we did a single pick on convert to cad now i'm going to try to do a chain selection here let me see if i can get it uh so we'll do a chain select on this um i got most of it so that's okay uh for what i'm trying to show here so i did a chain select all right i could add in just this other entity here uh we'll go with that one right there so that gives me the group all right this one here i can um Let's see, I can deselect that one, I can deselect that one. So that just gives me the total profile right there. All right, um, my active layer is, there's no other geometry on it. I'm gonna do convert selected toolpath to CAD geometry. We'll say okay and cancel. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, blank out our toolpath here. And you can see we're, we were able to convert this uh, toolpath into geometry and then you can use that geometry just like you would use any other geometry uh ernie has a question why would i want to convert to cad um there are a number of different reasons why you may want to convert to cad all right please keep in mind the toolpath editor is not just for 2d machining it's for 3d machining as well um, three, four, even five axis machining. So there are times where you may want to modify some aspect of your, your tool path and you may start by converting it to wireframe then modifying that wireframe and then replacing that tool path with the new modified wireframe. So that would be an example. Um, there, there are other times where you may use the tool path because like Z-level finish will get you an outside profile. Um, you may need to use that in, uh, to aid in, in the, the tool path development. Okay, so there are a number of different reasons. I don't know if that was concise enough for you, Ernie, but uh, uh, it, it can be really vast and it really depends on what you're doing. Okay, so we did uh, single entities, we did a chain, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and undo this. We'll edit this tool path, okay? We're gonna window pick everything here. We're gonna do convert to CAD, we'll say okay. Uh, we'll hit cancel. And here you can see we have all of our tool path now converted to wireframe. All right, so you can do single entity chains, window selection, we talked about the active layer. Now, just so that we're all on the same page, convert to CAD does have limitations. The idea is not to take all of your tool path and convert it all to wireframe. There is a limit of a hundred entities, okay? So let's, uh, let's take a look at a different uh, feature here. I have a, an adaptive pocket here. So, you know, adaptive pockets, I mean, there's a lot of smaller segments. Uh, so let's go ahead and try it with this one. We'll right click, uh, edit tool path. We're gonna window pick everything here. We're gonna do convert to CAD. Uh, you can see that we have um, one line 99 arcs. We'll choose OK and then cancel and then we'll just blank our tool path. Now what you'll see here is that it didn't get all of the tool path. It only got the spiral down and a few of the arcs. Okay, so once it hits that 100 entity, it will do the first 100 and then it doesn't do any more. So that is a limitation of it. Um, it's really, it, it's limited on purpose because uh, a lot of these files, they can have hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of entities. And if you convert that all back to wireframe, the files become really heavy. Um, and it's not, it's not the best scenario. Okay, yeah, David, that's exactly why. You wouldn't be able to do it all. Uh, we did put a limit there, so you have to do it in sections and, and now you know. All right, cool. So we got that handled here. So again, convert to CAD. This feature allows you to convert your toolpath into lines or arcs. You can do single entities, chains, window selection. It gets put on the active layer and there's a limit of 100 entities. All right, so let's go ahead and undo that. Unless there's any additional questions, 
Uh, let's see, could you use convert toolpath as a containment boundary for another operation? Yes, you could, Jerry. You absolutely could convert your CAD to get your wireframe, and then once you have that wireframe, you could either use it as a boundary, you could use it to develop surfaces, um, you could modify it, and then use it as new toolpaths. So those are some of the different ways that you could use it. Um, very good. And again, if there's any other questions, every question is a great question. Just go ahead and fire away whatever Whatever you guys got I haven't had any questions from you Thomas come on um, Tom if you're with us here uh, you know shoot shoot me a question um, Don pillow please uh, whatever you guys have just go ahead and fire it away the more questions the better that way we get a nice full Q&A that covers all these topics all right now uh, the next one that we're going to talk about is move okay this feature allows you to change the location of your toolpath all right there's drag pick enter and link options so let's take um let's take uh this spiral toolpath that we have here you can see we have two different spirals i'm going to just go to a top view i'm going to come in here and i'm going to do edit toolpath so this is right click on the operation left click on edit toolpath okay so now we we're in our selection all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and window pick our uh, tool path here so we have all of our tool paths selected um, we're going to go to the command and move so we're going to do a move and then so here are our parameter options the, the first one i'm going to pick is drag just because it's really easy for me so i'm going to just go to drag and then now we have our dynamic handle here i can move this along in x i could move it uh, along, I'm sorry, along in Y, along in X, I could move it up in Z, I could move it down in Z, okay? Um, you do see that there is some linking when you move this, so you could do a direct rapid, you could do a direct feed, you could do a direct auto, uh, depending on what you're moving, if it has to relink, uh, you know, you can choose the way that it's linking. Again, in order to execute, we can choose execute, and then now you can see the toolpath is uh, changed its location. We'll go back to a top view. So you can see uh, the move command again in a drag. We're going to be able to move it to a new location. Now, what I want to do at this point, so I moved it. It's an arbitrary move, but I'm just showing you how you can drag it. I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is after you edit your toolpath, it is going to lock that toolpath. You'll see it shows up red and it shows up with a little lock over it. OK, uh, the reason why it locks it is it locks it to retain those settings. All right. If I come up to my tree here, uh, if I go to Milling's uh, machine setup and uh, uh, or let me go up a little bit higher. Let me go to milling job and then we'll do compute all toolpath. This is going to go ahead and recalculate all the toolpath, but the one thing it's not going to recalculate is our spiral pocket here. So that uh, toolpath, what it does, or I'm sorry, uh, after you edit your toolpath, what it does is it locks it so that if you recompute, it doesn't overwrite your settings. Okay, does that make sense? All right, and then. Uh, at the corner, is it picking up a beer? Yes, I think it is, Dirk. It's a room temperature. Uh, um, oh, geez. What am I thinking here? This dark beer, uh, Guinness. It's a room temperature Guinness, Dirk. That's what it is, okay? Special just for you. Um, but anyways, so again, what we're talking about here is when you make an edit to your feature or your operation, it will show up red and it's locked so this way it won't change if you recompute your toolpath that it retains those settings now if we go to that operation and then we choose edit toolpath we can edit this toolpath again so what we're going to do here let me try let's try a move let's try moving these guys so we're going to select these uh we're going to go to a drag you know so this is um is getting a little weird here but uh we're going to go ahead and uh select them and, and move them again and then we're going to choose execute and then we'll say okay so the point of what i'm trying to show you here is that it, i locked i made changes but then i went back and edited and i made more changes so you're able to layer changes on top of it okay after you move it and it locks what can you do with it from then great question don you can go in and you can re-edit it uh as you need to now what if you want to get back to the beginning what if you 
you made some changes and then you decide that you don't want to keep those changes. All right, you can go over the operation. You can come in here, you can go unlock operation. Okay, now if I recompute that, it's going to go back to normal. All right. Uh, so could you move the spiral entry to spin around a point? That's actually a great question, Richard. I know that um, if we look at our spiral here in the center, um, it connects at this point here, but it doesn't spiral right in the center. Okay, so one of the examples that I'm going to do here is uh, kind of go through that. So I'm going to go through that now. I'm going to move. I'm going to move this um, this spiral here. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look. So we're going to go to a uh, front view here. All right, we're going to edit this uh, tool path. I'm going to window pick uh, my entities here. Okay, I'm going to choose my command. I think you're probably supposed to choose the command first, but uh, I just go to selection. But I'm going to choose my command move. All right, I'm going to go to a uh, top view here. Uh, come on. All right, I'm going to go to a top view. And this time, instead of doing drag, I'm going to do a value here. Um, I think it's 125, so we're going to execute that. And you can see I was able to move it uh, up uh, to where it needs to be. And then uh, I can choose OK. And now I was able to move that spiral from its offset center more to a center. OK? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yep, absolutely. Now, let's see, Don, so when you move it, but what is the purpose? It locks it so you can't do anything, and then you unlock it, and it does not compute where you moved it. Okay, so Don um, and, and everybody else, and, and it's a really good question. Why do we lock it? Well, we lock the operation to retain its settings. So we made a change here, so it's locking it so that if we compute it by accident, like if we go to this and we do compute all toolpath by accident, we don't want to lose our settings. So that's why we lock it. OK, now keep in mind, you can lock operations that haven't been edited uh, as well. OK, so if I wanted to lock the settings on this tap feature, I could come in and lock the settings on that tap feature so that that is retained as well. Now, generally, why would you lock an operation? You would lock an operation so that um, you don't recompute it. Usually with uh, calculations that take longer, uh, once you get them set, you don't want to recompute it by accident. It could take a really long time. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why you would lock them. We lock the operations when we edit them so that we retain those settings. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, when the spiral moved, it linked uh, the rest with a rapid move. Can you make it a feed move? Great question, Russ. All right, so let's go back into this guy here. We'll bring this up. This is actually, the, the link move is actually a feed move because it's a, a solid line. But it but what are your options is really what you're saying, Russ. So let's go back in. We're going to edit our tool path. We're going to select this tool path right here. So right now, you can say feed link. is It's set to a feed, all right? So what do we want to do with this? Now, when we initially edited it, when we initially made the edit, uh, we had some options with the linking that I had just passed over. Okay, um, let's say after we've made an edit, we want to change what that uh, value is. That's actually my next topic, which is going to be modify. So I'm going to go to command and I'm going to go to modify attributes. Okay, when I select this uh, item here, these are the ways that I can modify it. So I can do a cutting feed, I could do the plunge feed. I can do a rapid uh, value, or I could do a user defined. So if I want to change just the feed rate of our line, our link move here, I could set this to whatever I want it to be, hit apply, and then now I've changed that uh, feed rate just for that link move, okay? So hopefully that answered your question there. Now, let me do this. Let's go back to a... Uh, a top move over here. I'm going to do, um, let me uh, let me unlock it and recompute. So I'll just start over. All right. So let's talk about some other things that we may do here. So I'm going to come in and edit our tool path. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, the last spiral here, which is this one right here. All right. Uh, I'm going to do a convert to CAD and then I'm gonna cancel. So what that has done is it's given me the wireframe for that shape. Now that I have the wireframe, I could measure it in case I didn't know. 
you know, I have the ability to snap points to it. So I could do point on entity, you know, put the point where I need it to be, whatever the case might be, right? Okay. So now I can come back in here and I can edit this toolpath. Okay. I'm going to select all of our toolpath here. I'm going to make this a move routine, you know, and uh, uh, let me actually back up here for a second. Let me go, let's do point arc center. We'll do point arc center. All right, so now I have a point on the arc center. All right, so let's go back over to our wireframe uh, layer. Let's go point arc center. So I'm going to put a point on the arc center. All right, all right, so now I have two points. So I'll come back into our feature here. We're going to edit toolpath. All right, um, from here, I'm going to go to a front view. I'm going to window pick all of my toolpath here. Let me uh, go up. We'll go all the way down to here. All right, so that's the toolpath that I want to work with. I'm going to say move. So we talked about drag. We also did like a delta move. The next thing I'm going to do here is a pick enter. So I'm going to pick my start point. My start point is going to be the point right on center there. Okay, and then we're going to pick our end point and uh, my end point is going to be, where is it? It looks like it's right there. So I should be able to move this from its current location uh, into the center just like that. Okay, so I do get a preview. Uh, the preview shows me what it's going to do. I feel like uh, my Z point location was not in the right spot, uh, but a point to point move, you can go from one point to another point. I, in this case, I had one point up at Z and not at the bottom of the pocket, uh, so it was moving from there. Uh, what I should be able to do is, let's see here, 1.015. That should bring it back down, so we get it to where it needs to be. Everything looks good. We'll choose Execute, and then we'll say OK. So again, this was an example of moving the spiral from where it was, we did a convert to CAD, we snapped some points on the screen, we did a translate by two points, and then we modified the location. Okay, so hopefully um, hopefully that makes sense. Don, you had another question here. Let me review this real quick. What if you, what if you wanted it where you moved it to? I, I'm not sure what that's in reference to, but where you can move it wherever you want to move it. Um, the spiral link move, rest move, can you make it a feed? Okay, we did that one. Uh, Dirk had a question, convert wireframe toolpath. Could we convert toolpath to wire, change a portion, and convert it back to the toolpath? Yes, you can. That's when we get into um, the modify function. So let's go back in here and edit this. And uh, if you look at one of the commands, one of them is replace. Okay, so the replace allows you, you can convert to CAD, modify your tool path, and then replace it with what you had converted. Unfortunately, today I'm not going to cover replace. I, I may get into it, but let me get through these, these other topics here, and we'll see what we have time for, okay? <laughs> Frowny face. All right, no big deal. Let me see here. I love it too. This is a great thing. Uh, Jerry had a question for a series of countersink tool puzzle and drill. Can you change the depth of some and leave the others the same? Yes, Jerry, you can change the depth of some and leave the the others the same. Absolutely, it will only modify what you select. Um, but when you compute it, it just moves back to the original position. Uh, only if you unlock the feature, Don. If you unlock it, it goes to the original when you recompute. If it's locked, it doesn't recompute. That's the purpose of the lock. And if you need, if you have more questions with that, we can connect afterwards. You can we can do a screen scare uh, uh, screen share just just let me know. Okay? So let's see what we got. I got about 20 minutes left and I have uh, just uh, let's see. We got three topics here. Okay. All right. So let me cancel out of this. Uh, let's see. So we did move by drag, we did move by uh, pick and enter, and then the other one that we wanted to talk about was uh, linking options. Okay, so let me see here. What would be what would be a good example for the linking options? So let me unlock this. Let me recompute. So we'll get back to normal here. All right. So we have a, a profile option here. So let's go ahead and uh, edit this toolpath. We're going to go ahead and do a 
a move option, we're going to select this bottom entity here, okay? I'm going to do a drag, and I'm just going to drag this out, okay? So you can see how I'm dragging that toolpath out. Now, what I'm talking about is the link options right now. Um, so there's a couple of options. So we did pick and enter. When we go pick and enter, we pick or enter a value, right? We did drag, so drag lets you pull it around. The next section we're talking about here is the link option. So because I pulled this out like I did, what do I want it to do? So there is a direct auto, which uh, looks like it's the default, okay? Uh, you do have the option to set it to a rapid. So you can see, let me pull this out a little bit further. These are the link moves that we're talking about, okay? So it has an option for a direct rapid, it has an option for a direct feed, and then there's also direct auto, which it kind of picks what, what the smartest thing to do is, okay? So when you're working with your link options, those are the options that you have with a move command. It's either gonna do a direct rapid, a direct feed, direct auto okay so we're gonna do let's say we do direct rapid we'll execute so this made this rapids but let's say we didn't want them to rapid down into the part there again we could select our uh, tool path so we'll click on this one and this one and then we'll do a drag again you know and then we can actually move these up as such and then we can do an execute and you can see how you can start modifying what you're doing, okay? One cool thing would be replacing the rapid at the rapid plane with rapids where the tool is being kept down. How would you do that? Just the way that I showed you here, Dirk, you could uh, take tool path that might be at clearance and be able to move it up or down. Uh, you know, I like that dynamic statement, so you can dynamically move them up and down. Uh, so this way, you can work with what you need to work with uh, and adjust it graphically versus inputting it. Now, the one thing that I want to stress here, guys, this is a toolpath editor. This is not a toolpath editor uh, collision-free uh, uh, system. This is this is manual editing of your toolpath. So you're going to get what you set it to. Dirk's talking about a rapid. A lot of us U.S. customers deal with dog leg rapids. So you generally, you don't want a rapid when you're below the clearance plane because the the tool motion isn't always what you expect from it. Okay. So you're not getting collision checking here. You're getting customization and optimization. And versus having to do some of this stuff in the G code, and that's a, a, where a big advantage of this is. Instead of having to read through the G code and modifying this, you can do a lot of this modification just graphically with your tool path. And that's a big, big benefit of it. Okay. So we did drag, we did pick enter. Uh, we did talk about the link options as well. Again, uh, you can use this. Uh, I wanna, why, why might you need to use? Some of you may be struggling with it. You know, why might you want to move your geometry? Uh, a tip here is if you need to move you know, your profile, you want to adjust something, instead of having to go back and edit the CAD and then uh, reselect it and recompute, you can just come in here and move it, okay? So it's just quick and easy. I know a lot of the programmers I work with, the Bobcat operators, they're run and gun job shop environments, which is very fast paced. You're running deadlines and you do things as quick and as easy as possible. And, you know, if you can move your geometry, I'm sorry, if you can move your tool path, without having to edit your geometry and then update it. A lot of times that's a quick and easy way to make adjustments without having to take more steps than is possible, okay? All right, now, the next thing that I wanna go I want to go through is just the modify function, okay? So we did, a, or the modify command. So we did uh, the move, we did delete, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go to modify attributes. Again, modify attributes, same thing. We choose our command. OK, we're going to go ahead and select what it is that we want to work with. All right. So I'm going to highlight both of these here. All right. When you're in modify, you do have to reselect them in this window because otherwise, here, let me delete them all again. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to click on this one. All right. Um, I guess you can go through here and you could say cutting feed apply to all and that would apply to all. But if you wanted to set something different for this one, you could say that was a plunge feed you know, apply and then, uh, or I'm sorry, that's apply to all. Uh, execute and then you could do, so let's go to this one. We're going to say cutting feed, execute, uh, and it did both of them. I'm sorry, I, I got the workflow here wrong. So let me, um, let me start over. Okay, so I'm going to 
I'm going to choose my command, modify attributes. I'm going to select what it is that I want to work with. I'm going to select both of these, okay? And you can see, see how I'm not able to get into this option here. So now when I select both of these or a single one, now I can get into the type under parameters. I could set user to find. I could set what it is, and then I can hit apply to all. And then now I've set what that feed rate is, okay? All right, so... Uh, again, this is the modify, so you can set to the cutting feed, the plunge feed, or the rapid feed, or you can just use user define, and then you can set it whatever you want, all right? So I could delete all these, I'm sorry, delete all, I could select this arc, I could say user define, I want that to run at 75 inches a minute, apply to all, okay, and I'm good. All right, so hopefully that makes sense there for modify. There's so many different scenarios or uh, cases where you may want to use modify to slow things down um, or speed them up uh, and this is just a fast and easy way to do it now the last thing that uh, I want to talk about is delete uh, so let's go ahead and cancel out of that uh, so if you're gonna delete uh, toolpath I mean in this particular example I mean maybe not the best uh, best way to show a delete but I I'm gonna show you anyways all right so we I'm gonna go to the profile rough here right click left click on edit toolpath okay uh, we're going to do the delete command and then we're going to select what we want to delete so i'm just going to window pick this section here all right so i've selected all those section there all right so now um when you look at your parameters you have link plunge direct rapid and then you have retract rapid plane feed plane safe z and custom okay so these are your different options for it to link or for it to re, re, uh, retract, depending on what it is that you're doing. So in this case, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna link at a direct feed, okay? So I went to direct feed. The other thing that I can do here is I can add an extension. So I can add an extension either as a value or a percentage. I'm gonna set it to a value, and then I'm gonna execute, and you can see how I got rid of that radius there and then uh, what I did is I extended the path out. Now, maybe that isn't what I wanted to do, okay? So maybe I wanted to change that. What I can do is I can undo it, right? I'm going to go ahead, go back to a top view here, and then uh, window pick what it is that I want to work with. And then give me just a second, guys. All right, so we select what it is that we want to get rid of. Okay, we're deciding how we want it to link. So we did um, retrack. We're going to do, let's say, a direct uh, rapid here. Again, we're going to add our extension. We'll say uh, two inches, execute. Okay, so this one is now uh, doing a rapid as it relinks. Okay, uh, we're going to come in here again. We're going to undo. Uh, we'll go back to a, a top view. We'll window pick what we want to work with. This time we're going to do a direct uh, feed. We'll add our extension, say two inches, execute, you know, and now it's going to do a direct feed. Okay, so when you delete, what you have to consider is when you delete, you know, I mean, most of these are chains, so it's got to know how to link. When it's linking from one section to another, which is going to be this move right here, right? Uh, when it's linking from one section to another, uh, that is, that's the link, okay? And when it retracts, when it has to go up, you know, that would be the retract. So those are the two sections there. And again, you can layer your edits on top of things. So I could move this out. You know, I could come in here and let's say, um, you know, maybe I'm going to select this move here. You know, I could say delete. Um, let's go ahead and execute. So that one ended up going to a rapid, you know. Uh, you know, you could come in here. You could select this one. You could say move. Uh, I'm going to do a drag. This one I'm going to uh, drag down deeper. Uh, it doesn't seem to like that, but let's give it a shot. Execute, and then OK. Or we'll leave it that where it is. OK, so one, I deleted and it went up. Another one, I pushed it down. OK, so uh, again, when you're dealing with delete, uh, you need to pay attention to link options. Uh, so let's go back to delete. So you're going to either link, retract, plunge, direct, rapid, or direct feed. Uh, you also have your retracts, your retract to rapid plane, retract to feed plane, uh, safe Z or custom. 
all right and then uh, you also have your extension so you can have it push back and forth do the changes show on the solid model um, the changes we're making is to the toolpath itself George so it's not going to reflect on the solid model uh, you know if I bring the the solid layer back up you can see the solid is going to stay the same the changes that we're making here again are directly on the toolpath itself it's a toolpath editor all right so links retracts and extensions I kind of went through this uh, a little fast so let's um let's cancel out of this one and we'll go through this again let me turn the model off here we're gonna edit our toolpath we're gonna uh, let's say delete we're gonna window pick what it is that we want to delete all right uh, we want to add an extension here so we're gonna say two inches all right so that pushes it out and then um, let's go ahead and uh, execute this. And here you can see that it's re, uh, retracting to uh, the rapid plane. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's undo that. We're gonna window pick them again. This time we're gonna say to Z feed plane. We'll execute. Uh, okay, so I didn't add the extension, so we're gonna undo, window pick, add the extension two inches this one we're going to do the feed plane execute so that puts it at the feed plane we'll go ahead and undo reselect extension two inches uh, this time we're going to do the safe z you know you can see the rapid plane let me zoom in a little bit rapid plane feed plane safe z which i think is the r plane is the safe z and then uh then you also have a custom where you can enter the value that you want. The other thing you can do, and again, it doesn't really matter because you can layer these. You can make it feed plane, execute that, all right. So that's the feed plane. Then you can come in and say move, pick this stuff again, drag it. All right, so we're going to go up because we want it to go further. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, change in the rapids in certain areas just for some clamps instead of all of them. I mean, there's a lot of different... Um, uh, different applications that you can use for that all right so those are the topics that I have today finished um, with a couple of minutes left here I, I want to thank everybody for joining us if there's any questions that you have uh, while this uh, meetings open we, we can go open questions here and see what you guys got um, otherwise I really appreciate everybody uh, spending some time with me here today uh, let's see what we got Ken can you reverse the direction of the path in the editor uh, direction of cut so in other words like if this one was clockwise and make that one counterclockwise I don't believe so um, not uh, not with a uh, that's that's a good question uh, let me see here uh, edit I think where uh, I think where that's gonna end up happening is when if you do like a, like a replace you're gonna uh, chain select the tool path but I'm not sure to be honest I'm not sure Ken that's a great question as far as controlling the direction of the path so I'll have to find that one out you you'll see that in the Q&A doc that that I create on this so thank you for that one let's see Jerry had a question if you want to offset a tool path a few thousand to tweak it final dimension or account for an undersized tool can you offset the tool path Jerry if you're doing that I mean you can no, you 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 could replace the tool path but I don't think that's the best workflow for you um, if you're trying to adjust uh, for finish you can come in here under parameters and you have your side allowance that you can use um, what you want to make sure this can be a positive or a negative number and you just want to make sure that under patterns you have system comp uh, being used this is if you want Bobcad to do to do the adjustments that you're talking about. Um, more typically, we'll use machine compensation, so we'll turn G41 or G42 uh, on, and then you'll use the diameter offset at the control to adjust, um, you know, your comp settings. So you can dial in the wall. So generally, how that's how that's going to work. Um, did you make it through Irma? Okay, yes, I did. Um, my wife was a little uh, little worried I'd have to say she would have preferred that we left the state um, but we did pretty good uh, hunkered down with the grandparents and the kids and everything at our house um, we were in evacuation C so we never got evacuated 
uh, that we were very close to the water and um, just a little bit of wind. I don't know if, if you've ever been through a hurricane before. I'm from New Jersey, so there, there's been a couple that have come up through there and I've been here for a while as well. Uh, windy and rainy. Um, I have not been through a category four or category five or anything crazy like uh, this could have been. Uh, but at the end of the day, everybody has a page in their book and mine was surviving Irma. So thanks for asking. Let's see here. Uh, another question came in. Can I get the hotkey list that you talked about last week? Yes, David. We will email the hotkey list to everybody again. Um, uh, let me see if I uh, – let me see. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can find the link for it right now, uh, but uh, yes, we will send that to you, and I definitely recommend you print it out and you use it. Uh, Jerry had another question here. Can you use it to add moves to jump over clamps? Uh, yes, you can use it to add moves to jump over clamps. Now, you could use tabs. Tabs could be used for it as well, um, but you... Uh, I was thinking of you the whole time, Erwin. I promise I really was. So hopefully I did a good job. Thank you, bud. Um, so one of the things that, you know, I didn't get into here was really some of the, some of the different editing. So what I'm going to do is um, let me, uh, let me make this a single step and recompute it. So we're, what we're talking about is uh, uh, let me unlock it, uh, recompute. All right, so we have a single step here. So there's some things that you can do as far as like modifying. Like let's say if there was a clamp here, um, I'm just going to sketch one up on the screen as an example. Uh, let's say uh, there is a clamp here and you wanted to jump over this. There's a couple of things that you would really need to do. Uh, one of the things that you would need to do, actually that's amazing. All right, copy the link. I'm going to throw into the chat, if you guys um, want the hot key, uh, sheet, I'm going to pay, uh, nope, that's going to be the wrong link. Hold on a second, guys. Let me see if I can get this. All right, let me open it up here. This is the, the document we were talking about. The first one that I just, I don't think that will work. This one will work. So if you want it, it's right there. Just click on it and you can download it. Um, it's got a couple of the hotkeys and the things to get you guys started. So there that is. All right, so let's get back to this. Um, thank you, Zen. Good job, good timing. All right, so um, jump and clamp. So what happens here is, you know, if we look at this, let's edit this, uh, this tool path here and we select this, you can see that this is a single line. So in today's webinar, you know, I covered delete, I covered move, and I covered modify attributes. So there's eight options here. Um, one of the things that we would need to do with this thing here is we'd have to break it if we wanted to you know, get this section to go up higher. Okay, so that's one of the options here is break. Uh, we can say screen position. You know, We can take this and we can move one there. We can say uh, execute, so we broke it on one section. We'll come back to select. We'll select it again. We can take this, um, uh, all right, let's go like this, and then we'll go like that, and then we can move this. You know, and, and I'm just dragging it uh, along uh, the screen right now, but you can apply distances and things like that. But we'll move another one here, and we'll say execute. So what we've done is we've broken the tool path in two sections. Um, we don't want to break it now. What we want to do is a move. Um, we're going to do a drag you know, and then we can drag this thing up like that and then execute. So that's an example of how if you needed to avoid something, uh, you'd be able to avoid it. And, you know, in the next webinar that I do, uh, we'll go into a little more detail for that. Can you snap the breakpoint to an intersection? Um, I don't think you can. Uh, I, I'm not uh, positive, but I believe not. When you break, um, you have divisions or you have screen point. Um, what I would like to see is like a point, like if I already had a point on the screen and uh, it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't seem to pick that up. So like uh, I, right now, I believe it's just this drag method and then also this, uh, this distance or uh, percentage. Okay. So, but again, we'll, we're going to go into more detail on these other ones that are here again. So we have break to go through. Um, we have extend cut move to go through. We have uh, replace to go through, 
And then there's also trim and relink. So there's a bunch of different options that are in here. Uh, yeah, but that would definitely work, Jerry. Again, you know, you, you may go through and run this through the animation because you got to make sure that um, the tool, you know, because that's the center of the tool. So you got to make sure that that tool is staying away from that edge. Um, you know, which I did an okay job of that. But yeah, you can jump clamps. You could use it for drilling. Um, all, all kinds of different things that you can do there. So now uh, it's just about the two o'clock mark. So unless there's any additional questions that you guys may have, please let me know. Otherwise, um, Real excited to see you guys in the next one. More likely than not, I'll pick up the rest of the features that are in the Toolpath Editor. Um, soon we'll start moving into some of the 3D stuff. There's still Laid to cover. Uh, still uh, a lot of uh, uh, multi-axis. Uh, there's no premium to cover. There's a lot of topics that will be uh, rolling out over the next few weeks. So, again, I really appreciate everybody spending some time with me here today. I've enjoyed this webinar like I do all of them. If there are any last questions that you guys may have, uh, please let me know. And as always with Bobcad, you can expect fewer steps, better cuts, and more profit. That is the idea. Okay, thank you so much, Ken. Thank you, Dirk. Uh, Jerry, thank you so much. Again, I appreciate everybody spending some time with me here today. Again, if there's any last questions, uh, just uh, let me know. Otherwise, um, we'll see you in the next one. I'll give a couple of seconds for any last questions. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, we'll move on. You're welcome, Richard. Thanks for showing up. Good seeing you in there. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much.